Dr. Scott Young, good to see you again today. How you doing? Doing good. I always like our next installment. There's always so many questions. Every time I think people have asked the main ones, there's a whole new crop of questions. I go, yeah, we didn't answer that, ask that one. So uh, I know you got to, you want to jump in at some point. So uh, I've seen some of your slides and then we've, we've got a list of questions to ask you. So where do you want to I'm start? Gonna, I'm going to throw something out at you. Okay. This is a book. Let me see if I can get it to like angle right here. It's uh, Good as Gold by Judy Shelton. It's one okay. that I'm working on right now. Um, I, I will tell you, and I wasn't trying to like, you know, stump her book here but it's fascinating this this puppy has been sitting in the wings on, for her uh for uh about a year really it's, it's fascinating it just hit in october here um judy shelton is who i believe already is the fed chairman in oh, really? the wings. Really? i believe steve mnuchin and she are in the wings pushing forward, you know, the quantum financial system. We, if you listen to her, wow, pardon me guys. Who was in there? Was just awesome. And uh, if you listen to her as well as the, as well as the dog in the background, yeah. you would, you would hear her talk about many of the issues that are happening in the background, right toward Nasara and the QFS. Cause she's talking about a gold backed currency and she's that legitimate voice that you might say, well, she's out there. Well, yeah. And she's been pushing this. And trust and me, the, really what's cool the, the premise of her book, just in a nutshell, is just basically we need to have sound money. I mean, every time you let a government go off and do their crazy things, they get to make up money and, the, and it's a debt based money that yeah. and, and they put the debts upon us through treasury backed currencies or uh, uh, bonds. And then uh, people make money off of off of the money itself on many different levels which sidles us. So for instance, if I saved, um, it, it'd be like this. If I saved gold in a, um, in a vault, I'm going to make money on that gold. If I saved oranges in a vault, all the oranges are going to, you know, they're just going to disintegrate. That's kind of what money is when we keep it, unfortunately, in some level of savings, we're losing sometimes way more than the inflation rate is. So that's the, the, the basic point. But she is just smacking me. I'm sitting in the car listening to her. And I'm like, yeah, what she said kind of stuff. So, good. Well, I, I have to. So good as gold. That's good. good. Gold. And you do you have that? <laughs> just part boy, this dog is normally super violent. <laughs> my wife. I may have to go attend to her for a second. It's okay. Um, I don't have. I mean, you can find this uh, good as gold. Um Judy Shelton, you can go to Amazon and get the book. <clears throat> it's an audible book. So it's very simple to kind of get either one of those. Um, I mean, but uh, I'm, because I'm going to pick it apart, I'm doing the physical book and I'm going to do the audio book. But a lot of people like to do audio. I'm going to put you on hold here, but you, or you keep talking. Okay. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to put my, not you on hold. I'm going to put me on hold. I'll yeah, be back. Here, here we go. So I think one of the things that I would, I would look at, these are, you know, these background books like this. And, you know, I have my book here, Revelations of the Red Pill. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, when they when they look at what we're doing and how we're looking this forward, people say, I don't know if I believe in Nasara. I go, well, guess what? Um, if you believe in a gold-backed currency and you believe in basically the deletion of the Fed, Judy Shelton's talking about this. And you know, one of the one of the precepts that I believe is is in the background is Judy Shelton would be the Fed chairman in a transition point until we move only with the uh, gold backed currency through Treasury, and because Treasury has to control it. And frankly, she talks all about that. So I think that's kind of the cool stuff that's out there. Um, if we want to, if we can kind of bring up the the slide there, and we can kind of do the first um, part of the slide here. So. I wanted to give you guys the essence of Nasara because people are asking all about this. This is the fifth of the series that's out there. And now it's funny because October 15th is the next date that you have to pay, you know, the IRS amount, right? So one thing I do always say is that, you know, if there are people out there trying to sell you QFS crypto or tell you something about banking or whatever, 
and they say that they're, you know, Steve Schultz or Mark Z or Dr. Scott or whatever, just block and delete them. Okay. So let me share with you a couple points where the IRS situation comes out of. It comes from the 16th Amendment that is coincidentally in the exact time frame of 1913 that the Fed existed. Now, if you and, and they came in a little earlier than that, but it comes in the same year. And you think, why did it come in the same year? Did you know that we never had any income tax based system from a governmental level until 1913? Every tax was either a tariff or a sales tax, which is called a use tax from a governmental level <coughs> or, or this. And here's what I want you to read. Now, Every time you see a law that has a uh, kind of a confusing, um, non-overarching theme, that is, it's, it's not exact, it says this, Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes on income for whatever source derived. Wait a second. Which source? Um, without apportionment from among the states and without regard to any census or enumeration. And, and they're going, so you can take anyone that you want to. If they come in, they have to pay taxes for any crazy reason. There's also a very strange statement about the states, which also could show that every state is not really allowed to take their state tax income issues too. That's the crazy nutty thing. When they do it <coughs> purposefully vague, and if you read a lot of the statutes of the IRS, they're so vague, it's not even funny. And that actually tells you how illegal in nature that it really is. Now, I want to give you a short background on the Fed. If you haven't um, looked into this, a lot of people think the Fed is a federal agency, right? They are a quasi-federal uh, agency. They are owned by the 13 ma major bankers, okay? When you think of Wells and and Chase and BOA and all those different ones, those are the drivers of them. They're the, they're the chairman or the, the part of the board. When you have the chairman of the board and that person, for instance, Volcker or pick the other people that have been chairmen of the board, they are the drivers of it, but they actually get paid. What most people don't realize is the Queen of England is that background to that. And the other central bankers actually get a part of it with that too. Now, it starts in 1913. Why does it include the rest of the world? And it literally is off the charts of not making sense. And when things don't make sense, you know that there's extra planning in the background of it, right? It should never have existed with the other ones out there with that. Now, it's funny because one of parts of the uh, of this issue is the stock market move up. So in the 1920s, there was money being made by people and they, all they had to do is put in 10%. So if they had a had a let's make up a number, let's say they had $10,000 amounts of stock, all they had to put up is 1000 bucks toward that. And then what happened is that what most people don't realize is that October 29 is that unique surprise event that they call it a surprise. But there was a weird event, one of the first false flag events, which I kind of tracked down to the bugs called Bloody Valentine. That exact day, the Fed had decided that they were going to collapse the incomes of the nation and then thereby the world after that. That's how and, crazy. This and is. when you said it was a false flag event, you meant they, they caused something on purpose yep. to direct their attention from, from something else. This is my way of always, I always talk like this and I've been talking like this first, you know, on, on camera since 2020, a lot of people pick up on it, but false flags are like, look over here. Don't look at what I'm doing over here. Look over here. Don't focus on that. And so the, the bloody Valentine, if you go back and look at it in time, you'll see every paper putting up this. And that exact same day is the same day that these idiots go in there and they get to um, they, they start whatever they're trying to do. 
And th at this event, they were planning the stock market crash of 1929. So the and so just a, a, as an aside on that, it wasn't that people were just getting more and more selfish and getting out of control. This was a an intentional. It was the planned destruction of it. Yeah. You know, so so for instance, what would happen is that you know your stock was rising, right? If if it went from you know, at that ten thousand dollars, let's say it was ten bucks a share, and your stock was rising. Rising. Let's just say it was up to thirty bucks a share, so it was thirty thousand dollars, right? Yeah. You still had to pay that other nine thousand dollars of your initial investment, but what? So you would have, in essence, you know, thirty thousand dollars now minus nine thousand bucks, right? So what happened though? is that in the 29 and actually leading up days before it, it started to drop the values into what we actually call penny shares. This is the old, this is the first initial statement of the penny stock. Oh, the, oh I was going to ask that. So there were no penny stocks as we no, know. Nothing like that. it. Nothing Whoa. like it. And so what happened is they to the point where when people just sold it, they were selling it for pennies on the dollar. Well, who bought it? That the, the question that no one asks that has to, you know, no one really answers when you have stock market crashes of 87, you know, uh 2000, you know, all these different points of of time frame. Who buys it? It's always some banker dude that goes in and buys it and he buys it for pennies on the dollar, so they got basically nothing. They lost their even their $1000 investment. And these people were planning on that to uh, to do other things. So they might have bought a house with it on retainer, some level of that. And they lost everything. And that's why we saw this massive migration uh, from different areas because they lost everything. Mm. And so this is the fascinating point that happens. And it was all planned by the Gee. Fed. Just and like so they're doing that kind of stuff today. Now, this is a very big... Um, misunderstanding by a lot of people they hear well 1971 under nixon is the gold standard drop yeah 1971 um was a little bit different issue because what happened <clears throat> is all the nations could send their dollars back to america and get gold back in return so that's one of the statements the first one though was in 1933 and in 1933 the share price of the of an ounce of gold was twenty dollars and sixty cents so what happened is that you under penalty of a ten thousand dollar fine had to give your gold over they would give you twenty dollars and sixty cents but in one year's time the value of the gold went up to 33 bucks so you basically lost almost what 66 percent you know of the value yeah, of, yeah. of the of the gold and, and the Bank of France was one of the more interesting ones. They had 1.5 million um, ounces of gold. And they said, no, we're not going to do this. And they said, no, you don't have any choice in the matter. We're going to give you. And they transferred, you know, that, you know, uh, 1.5 million shares times $20.60. And so this is the way that they, they were. First, they were stealing the wealth through investments and they stole the wealth through the beginnings of that uh, of the increase increase of inflation so they had a big jump in inflation point that happens out there and then you get into that's where you get into the uh the paper currency that is worth you know some people will intimate anywhere from five cents in the dollar from the date that it starts but it's it's all about debt and this is how they play around with this. And that's why, you know, the Judy Shelton book, you know, Good as Gold is such an interesting part because she, what she's talking on is she's focused very heavily upon what the gold standards are. Is, is she, in fact, openly advocating for a gold backed dollar to come back? Is that what since 1994? She's been openly doing it and they wow. hate her guts for it. Wow. They, they literally wow. can't stand her. Did you know that she actually intimated in a very unique way? that Mitt Romney in 2019, when she was supposed to be the Fed chairman, Mitt Romney was the dude that that might have called, uh, I'm blank in the name, uh, I, th I think it might have been Greenspan at the time, but I'm, I Alan, can't remember. Is that Alan Greenspan? Had I think that. so, but 
I, I could be wrong on who it was, yeah. but there was a there was a conversation, you know, basically between the sheets um, of what of what was happening there, and they they totally knocked her out of their capability to do this, and she is belittled everywhere. And yet, when you listen to her and check it out, it is so strategic, smart. I mean, she's a PhD in economics. Wow. This woman has got it down. And I do believe that she is that, just like Trump is that de facto CIC, and we yeah. talked about the yeah. commander in chief, I believe that she is the Fed chairman that no one ever pays attention to the other. The Fed is. chairman like secretly uh, now? Or, in secret or, or, points. Yep. That's, okay. Wow. Okay, now I got to go look her up. And can you see? Does she do anything on YouTube that people can look um, up? She to? actually does almost nothing. I mean, she there was a one little video that I found, and that's it. I can't find any more that you can really check out. It's it's a, it's wild to watch her, and there's no websites and no other kind of things. Even when they put the book out, they put it under a thing called Independent Institute. Oh, it means okay. that no one, none of the big boys like Simon the Schuster even wanted to pick her up. It, it's it's totally crazy, and it's fascinating that's happening right now. So if you don't believe in Nasara and you don't believe in all this other stuff, but we have to have a gold-back currency, when you do a gold-back currency, everything changes. That's so Everybody. good. I'm looking forward to it. And, and we're uh, – I, I don't know what you said while I was out of the room here, but, I mean, we're close to gold-back. I mean, we could be – Weeks or months at the you know at the most, right? The reality is, it could you know to to change all the stuff with the EBS and you know the changeover, all the stuff. You, you got to realize that that we're we could be within a couple days of this. Okay, wow. It, it's like moving the stage into position. It's already been moved. All they have to do is you know set it off. Yeah. And most people to go, well, yeah, but you have to do X, Y, and Z and X, Y, and Z and X, Y, and Z. And they just keep kind of saying, saying those things up. And I'm like, if you know anything about military operations, you know that they're already prepared for it. Hmm. Once you understand there's a, you have a preparation, a preparation, a preparation. And, and you would have already had the stage set. And if you're going to be the great um, game theory, you know, chess man, like, like Trump is, We've already got this thing figured out. So they've been taking and removing the enemy's pieces left and right. Wow. So all you have to do is go flick, and we flick over the king, and it's all over. And when that happens, for anyone that, that, that trying to figure out well, how could they make it, it's it's fiat money. They have they ha they print a new dollar. Honest, I per personally have seen pictures of it. It's already in existence. It's called the and, treasure. It's called the U.S. note. Yeah, and yeah. it's said that some bank, many banks, have it in their vaults right now as we speak. Uh, do you believe that as well? Yep. I've, okay. I've, and, I've, and seen, I've, I've seen places. Let me tell you some interesting parts. Yeah, not it. sort of totally related, but I, I love this. I love this yeah. question too. Yeah. What I have seen them, um, what banks are doing in the background is they're changing out their money machines, their counting machines, and you're going. We said, why do you need to change the counting machine out? And I mean, I've, I've heard this over and over yeah. with banks. And, you know, like the dollar bill hasn't changed in size. Yeah. And, and you and you have to ask answer this other point. Why have they made, they first um, had stopped all the way through about 2022, 2020, somewhere in that range. They stopped making any dollar bills, any of the bills from 2017 on. No, yeah, they, that's right. And that was they showed up and they made a few and I think it was 21. Um, In other words, more. if if we could look at uh, what uh, time comparisons from, it sounds to me like from the moment Trump took office in 2017, they stopped printing old fiat money. Right. And and here's here's the thing. If you were in any other era, let's just say, forget about today. We're, let's say Steve and I are on together and it's 2000. Let's make up a number, right? Yeah. And here's the here's the thing in banking, um, change, you know, the quarters, dimes, and everything else, they go out of they, they go out of circulation in a much longer time frame. But paper bills, anyone who knows anything about paper bills, and you know, like I, I, I take deposits all the time, and paper bills are very fragile. So mm -hmm. You, you don't want those, you know, all the ripped up things. You know, when you go up to a vending machine and you try to put that real crumb, 
crumpled. Yeah, filling. I didn't like that. And it goes eh, 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 and shove it in 14 different ways. Well, guess what? That's why you can't really keep those. Well, so wait a second. If they're not, if they've not been making it, they stopped in 2017 and then they sort of made a little bit more in 2021-ish time frame. Wait, they should be making bills all the time, all year long. Yeah, because they, they recycled. Always, By the way, when they, when they did it in the 2021, did they put the 2021 date on it, or did yeah, they, they put a few. And and but I haven't I haven't personally seen. I've seen people show you know some dates uh, dates on there, but I haven't seen one. Every single yeah. bill I've ever seen, I've seen in in a more recent time frame it says 2017 on it. Yeah. So fascinating that they're thinking forward in this kind of thing. That should tell you. Wait a second something's about to happen. Yes, it is. So, yeah, it, it's, that's so good. That's so interesting. And this, I had heard that 2017 was it, but it just, just while I'm sitting here, I go, wait a minute. That's when Trump took office. Exactly. Pulled, it's like he walks in the door and pulls the lever and say, stop the presses, literally stop the presses. Exactly. Wow. Uh, and it's they, it, it, ran, it ran out of, they ran out of circulate. Uh, you needed so much in circulation for people to live. So they must have not quite been able to make it without printing a few more in 2021, I and, guess. And do you know that the uh, many of the governments, uh, the government itself, have been trying desperately to buy dollar bills and of, of different you know denominational types from all the countries around. You go like, yeah. well, can't you just print some more? Yeah. And the answer is they're not doing it. So every time you know they give money out to the Ukraine, which they did four hundred twenty. Five million, you know, r ridiculous amounts of money. It's yeah. all digital money, but it messes up us up in the systems with that too. Yeah. But they have not sent, you know, big old, you know, wads of dollar bills back. Yeah. They effectively print money, but they do it in digital. So that's not actually printed, but they put it into the system. Now it's spendable, but that's where that's what makes our inflation go sky skyrocket. Exactly. Money yeah. supply is too huge. It should it should make every single American go. Wait a second, what are you doing? Sending out money to anyone when we know in North Carolina they won't spend spend a dime on them. And 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 and, and I I tell you what this you know this whole thing is a massive push from every level. They are running scared right now. They have no answers to what's going on yeah and i had uh, one more thing and uh i've heard these banking stories every once in a while i hear it you and i listen to some of the same guy but but someone will go into the bank and say so you guys must have the new the new uh what they call rainbow currency because it's multicolored and it's vertical it's not horizontal it's vertical so the president's picture is not sideways like a landscape it's portrait so the president is it might be the same picture we're always used to, but he's he's not horizontal. He's vertical. Right. And, but, uh, but I, my own, my thing that I always say, people, because people go, I'm going to go ask the bank. Do you guys are you guys doing Nassara? Are you guys doing the quantum financial system, the QFS? And I'm like, you're asking the wrong questions. Okay. Let's say I'm sitting there with Steve, and Steve's my bank manager. Right. And Let's bring us, us back for a minute, you guys. Bring bring us here, and then we can go back to this in a minute. Yeah, we can bring back the screen in a second. Yeah. But let's say I'm going to Steve, my bank manager, and I, I if it listen, if he is an upper bank manager, he's under an NDA. He can't tell you anything. The only reason I like the stories, uh, Doctor Scott, is that they'll 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 say I asked the teller, and she she does this, and, and she smiles. Right. It's, I so, like that. I know you're not supposed to tell you, but I like that. No, but, but see, this is what I do when I've I've done this conversation with different people. Okay. Yeah. And listen, I get bankers all the time. And and what I, I will say is you probably can't tell me, but you've known that a whole bunch of systems have been changing a lot in the last couple of years. Hmm. You know, kind of thing. And that yeah. you know, they, they look at me like, I don't know how you knew that. And, and again. Their terminology is different than what we're, you know, classically, you know, using this yeah. conversation. So, so don't think because they couldn't, you know, say QFS or any of those other, you know, buzzwords. Yeah, they, they might they, even you know, be still. They might even be telling people that's just a rumor, that's a conspiracy. And but, they have to. But the, and they have to. But the. But I just enjoy 
hearing the stories about the teller looking both ways and it's these are multiplying these stories are multiplying uh so it means the more it multiplies the closer we are i yep. mean it's that, that they go and so one, one of the stories is yeah we just went train we were just in training last wednesday that kind of thing do you know that so, um I, I will say this uh you know i've been paying i paid i pay on by bill pay so yeah. like you know i go on and i you know tell i gotta pay my electricity and I say the amount and then I put the date, you know, I kind of give a little bit of time frame for it to me mail, right? So it's yeah. just there's several of those bills. The other ones I pay, you know, just directly to that site, right? Yeah. And then six, seven months ago, all of my bill pay wasn't going through. And so yeah. I'm calling the bank and I'm like, hey man, I'm gotten I'm behind on mortgage, I'm behind on this, I'm behind on that. I'm like, and they're all freaking out at me, and I'm behind by like two, two and a half months. My goodness. And I got like, and I'm like, wait a second. I've got proof here. Look on your systems. And it says in process for weeks and weeks and weeks. Oh, my goodness. What they had done is they told me, Scott, our systems had to be adjusted for those. The payment systems had to be adjusted. My dad told me the exact same story in a slightly different way. But it's happening everywhere. Is that, by the way, is that what people mean when they say they're changing over from the SWIFT system to the QFS, the quantum financial system, is what they're kind of talking you have about. To, you have to do everything from scratch. I mean, yeah. you're, you're talking about changing how people, you know, I mean, how a business would get their money and all this other stuff. There's so many little facets that are in there. Yeah. And and that's why it's taken a longer time frame on top of the war issue that we deal with. with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, I, I, I that was all for free. Yeah. I'll let you get your next screen. That's up okay. There. It's good stuff. So what does the fed say about itself? It's fascinating that they say this now, again, the feds, a secret, you know, central bank, you know, it, it, Volcker actually made a, a sidelong comment when Re Reagan was talking about his own issues. And I think it was like, 82 or so when he said this, but basically said, I don't care what they do. I don't care what, whatever they come up with. Um, we make the monetary policies. And, and when you, when you hear that kind of statement out there is it, 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 he's just throwing away anything the president says. And, and it was just, it should be a sign to people. When you look at them, the fed chairman runs the thing. So that's that's part of the system. Now they will tell you that they created the FDIC, a deposit agency. It's to support the nation's financial system. So it ensures deposits, it ensures their their ability and manages receivership. And then they give these these are direct statements from them. FDIC was created in 1933 to uh, response of thousands of bank failures in the 20s and 30s. We just told you why. Um, and this is the thing. FDIC receives no congressional co apportions. That, in essence, is a direct violation to Article 1 in the 8th um, section and in the 10th section. Congress has to have direct control of the monetary system and how it's done. And this is the way that they, they lie to you, but you didn't pay attention to it with that. Now, I always like to say this one. This is my favorite one. Why does the U.S. government pay almost $300 billion in interest? Now, this is an older theme. It's, they pay a lot more than that. Their for-profit business, privately owned, deceptively named Federal Reserve, which is a federal's Federal Express, um, a company which refuses to reveal its no owners, although the Constitution tells you you got to tell everyone. Um, and they... This is why they do this. They have the middleman and all this thing to come up with a zero interest thing. This is the sixth system of, that they do. They have corruption. The definite, definition of corruption is illegal behavior by officials or a departure from the original text. When you understand what that means, they're all participating in it every yeah. moment that they do it. The Constitution says... <clears throat> no taxation without fair representation. What's the Boston Tea Party in, I want to say, 1775 or four? I can't remember the exact date, but um, it's all because they put a tax on tea and we threw that tea overboard in Boston. And 
because of that issue. Well, and and the issue is we've been paying compound interest upon our money and they devalue it. They devalue our money by inflation. They make us pay double two, two and a half times when you talk about longer payment periods of time. This is this is the sickness, and they are they are anti constitutional in every way, shape, and form. Yeah. Now, so just and I know you're going to make this point. I want to make sure we make it really strong. What you're seeing on the screen right now, those things, corruption, constitution, uh, violation of the constitution, and you're just talking about the IRS. But these things are also the same for uh, lenders, bank loans, and mortgages because now, they're doing all of these things. Is why. Nassar is going to say, you've been acting illegally, debt's forgiven. Am I right. overstating it's, that? It's part of that. It's it, it's part of that. When you, when you, if, if let's say, you know, we've, and we've sort of talked about this on screen, but if, if Steve and I enter into a contract and he violates that contract yes. with that, the, the judge, when he gets, when that judge gets in the middle of it, he's going, Steve, you owe him, you know, the full amount back. Even though Steve goes, wait a second, I did the whole job for him. You did it through corruption. You violated it. You pay the whole amount, which means the whole thing is on Steve's shoulders in that way. That's contract law. Well, when we apply contract law, and by the way, I'm going to bring on a lawyer here in a little while. Uh, I've been convincing him. I have to bring him out there in a unique way because uh, he doesn't want to be shared, shown who he is exactly because uh, you get okay. fired. Um, but here's the thing. you know, We were talking about the same issue. And when you violate law, the weight of it is upon you. Well, guess what? The government's been doing it. And so they have to swallow all of this with that in, in total. Okay. So let's do a couple of these really cool um, uh, just videos that I snapped out there. So you guys can upload, you know, any one of them, doesn't matter which one you want to do here. And we'll talk about what Trump is saying. Do we do we play one and then stop and play the yep. next one and stop? Okay. Play one and, they're very short. Okay. All right. Here we go. Just yesterday I announced that there will be no taxes on overtime. No taxes on overtime. And let's do the next one, and we'll we'll talk about it. Okay. All right. Here's number two of, out of three. And when I'm back in that beautiful White House, we will pass larger tax cuts for workers. And we have a special tax that here is going to do, I think, quite well. It's called no tax on tips. No tax on tips. No tax on tips. Did you see when I announced that a long time ago, all of a sudden she announced it and she was met with rebuke. And, you know, they can't do it anyway because they have so much legislation in that make sure that you pay your tax on tips and it didn't go over too well. And then the third one. Here, here we go. Seniors on fixed incomes who are suffering the ravages of Kamala Harris's inflation nightmare. It's a total nightmare. I'm promising no tax on Social Security benefits. This cruel double taxation of Social Security benefits only came into existence in 1984. And at the time, it only affected a small number of recipients. Now, nearly half of all seniors are forced to pay income tax on Social Security. Okay, so let's let's deal with this from a, a, a little bit different level, okay? So, and, and Trump has brought up all these other little things. So let's just, we'll just talk about tips and social security with that too okay. for, for a second. Okay. So as an, as an employer, when I go to my payroll company, so I will load in and I have people, some people who are on hourly and some people are on a salary basis, but when they separate those salary basis thing, make up a number of that. They'll separate it over 20, 80 hours in a year, and then it, it shows you like how much you make an hour. Th that's how I look at that stuff, right? Yeah. <clears throat> the next phase that I always put in there is I have to put their PTO. Now, so their paid time off, you know, say they say they're out for eight hours in that pay period, whatever pay period happens, it's calculated based upon their hourly amount, 
whether yeah. they're salary or hourly. Okay. Then there is another screen and, and you might see other screens out there. There's, there's some amounts that maybe you're paying the um, employee because you're giving them a cell phone benefit, but you, you know, you give them a certain amount or other things. Those are pre-tax dollars. Then there are simple IRAs, which are all pre-tax dollars. But when we talk about what I'm entering every single time, <clears throat> I'm entering in their hours, making sure their PTO is correct. And then you go into um, what's called bonus or commissions. Okay. And so what they were talking about here in the tip area, tips are actually listed as bonus level, bonus commission kinds of things. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying, okay, so how would I li list in? Well, if, if Steve works for me and he works and he works as, you know, uh, the head waiter or whatever, and he's, he's making makeup a number five bucks an hour plus tips, right? I would load in, you know, he works 82 hours in the period of time. He didn't take any PTO off. And then I would put his tips in under the bonus section, but they can, you can have it say stated that way. It doesn't matter if it's tips, bonuses, you know, commission kind of things. Okay. Cause they're not, they're not uh, taxed. They're taxed on the exact same level as the hourly rate. Okay. Okay. So when Trump is saying those particular three sets of comments, right? He's basically saying, that anyone ever gets. He's being super clever. He knows he's talking about Nassara, doesn't he? He does. And here's the thing, guys, and I know it's 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 a little bit weird because you're going, because I've listened to tax accountants who don't get it, right? And and it's like they're it's like they don't see the darts coming right for their head and they don't duck away at the right time. Go, guys, listen to me here. I've seen accountants who go, well, I'm not sure how he's going to do that, but he's going to have no tax <laughs> on tips. And, and I'm like going, you, come on, dude, stick with me for a second here. There's no way you could calculate this. Now, when you pull your W-4s at the end of the year, right, <clears throat> and you get an amount that you make, the average yeah. American sits around $50,000 a year. It doesn't tell the, any person, and you, i i I, I can tell you no person in the world can ever do this. So it doesn't say you made X amount on your, you know, salary level and X amount, I mean, Y amount on your commissions. It doesn't do that. It just throws it all together, 50,000. It'll tell you what social security and Medicare amounts. And then it says state and federal. That's all it does out there. So how can you as an employer say that that particular thing cannot be taxed and it doesn't fix this other part. Well, then Trump then backs up and says, well, we're not going to tax on, tax on social security. What he did is he went to the lowest realm of incomes and he said to you, I'm going to take care of you. In other words, the tip, the people that live on tips. Yeah. And, and he's talking, but here's what happens because we're not listening through the filters of the information. I heard it a long time ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, Steve but gets most it. people don't. Most people don't. But, but see, most most normies listen to a statement and they don't hear the inference. And why okay. does Trump, knowing full well he's talking about the provisions of Nassara that he's probably in charge of uh, implementing at the right moment, why doesn't he say, folks, I'm going to bring in a thing called Nassara? What, what's your what's your argument why he won't say that? So that's a beautiful question, and it is is so fundamental, and it's so it, it's it's brilliant. Okay. okay, so here's the point. Here's the reason why. Because let's say Trump said, "I'm gonna," or let's let's do a more basic question. Why doesn't he say, "I'm deleting the IRS"? Yeah. Because that's what he's going to do. Right? Well, you could say, I'm deleting the IRS. Here's what happens. Every Congress, every state house, every governor, they would decry him instantaneously because what they've all been told through the lies is that pays for schools and roads and all the blah, blah, blah things. Yeah. And yet, as a person who way before I knew anything about this stuff, when I would look at the budget 
of Oklahoma, because I was doing a little a longer dive on this particular topic. The budget of every single state comes from tariffs, you know, has a little bit of federal funds that, that gets listed in there, and they're not anything to do with that. They're like federal funds for Medicaid, Medicaid kind of things, right? Yeah. And then they also list out the massive majority is sales tax. And you go, well, but wait a second. I pay, you know, 5%, 7%, whatever for state income taxation. And the yeah. answer is it doesn't go to them. And so you say, okay, well, wait a second. Where does the money that they get go to? It goes to the pet projects of every single Congress, Senate, whatever president that they actually want to do. It doesn't go to any of those those areas because the 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 uh, excise taxes and other kinds of things. That's what runs the government. <clears throat> now, here's the point: if he stated that, he would have a whole can of worms that would blow up in his face. Yeah. So he has to say it in this little sidelong way. And, and it's very it's very clever. I'm I'm glad he's doing it. But guess what? But guess what he did to he did what? to Kamala. She's so stupid that she didn't even know she walked into his trap. She goes, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say there's no tax for tips too." Right. Like you idiot. Sorry, but I'm gonna do the do the you know, bold thing. You <laughs> idiot. You didn't even know you walked right into his trap door and fell right through it because you can't say that if you if you're if you're anywhere near a Democrat or even a Republican in that viewpoint. So he can't say, sorry, is because there, people there, go, wait a second, what about? And is what about IRS the IRS is their cash cow. It's what they right. live on. It's what the deep state, yeah, it's like, you're right. I hadn't quite thought of it that way. I, I My first reaction was, oh, no, he's, she's going to steal his thing. But then she retracted it or something a little bit. She kind of said, <laughs> didn't she? She kind of said it, and then she dropped it. Yeah, she never said it again. It's because it's because probably the speechwriters are sitting there like going, "Oh, stop, you idiot! Don't do that! Don't say that!" And they're, they're freaking out in the background. But well, we better get some questions here. Uh, are we good? Is this a good time to start with some questions? I had one. Let me just double check here. Uh, okay, the, uh, this is one that I was. I told people I would I would ask this, and then I'll go to the through our list here. Uh, this person's heard a lot about Nassara, Jasara, about auto auto mortgages, home loans, home mortgages, and all that. They're going, once the debt's forgiven, they're not asking, you know, whether it will. They're saying, once it's forgiven, how do we prove we own the cars, the homes, these properties? Because uh, how are they going to get free and clear title? Because we're told that you got to have free and clear title, which the bank gives you back sure. usually. So what? how does that happen now? Actually, it, it, it almost happened to me in a different way. Um, okay. and, and let me give an example. For instance... Um, I had paid off my son's car, but somehow I didn't have the right title. It said, still said BOA and, um, and you know, Scott on there, right? Yeah. So I, I, didn't, I mean, and I hadn't really looked at it, and we're about ready to sell the car. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, this thing's still got, like, it's still got the notation of that. So what I had to do is call up uh, the, I think it was the BOA or the insurance people, and I go, get me a clean title. So the clean title rips off the BOA and then they, they um, drop ship out. You know, the title says Scott owns that, you know, Kia Optima and just says Scott own the Kia Optima, right? It takes, you know, normally it takes, and, 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 and it actually happens the same way if you pay off anything, you know, major like that, a secured thing. So they, they're required as a bank, if that, that's who got it, to send you the title. Yeah. So guess what happens when you have uh, it is going to be a mass mail out of your titles. <laughs> it's going to show you're the only one left on the title. That'd be like the if they if they were going to close their doors, for instance, the last thing they would do, have to do before they close the doors is give everyone their titles back. Right. Everyone. It, everyone. They, would, they would have to because in essence, there's no collection agency in that way. Now. We know that they've done all these crazy things. They sell it off to third parties and third, yeah, parties, crazy third parties and third parties. But that's the legal mechanism that you have to do if you have a paid off vehicle. 
And you can't, by the way, you can't. So like I had to do that because if I sell it to, I was selling it to CarMax. I sell it to CarMax. CarMax can't turn that thing around and sell it because it has no clean title on it. Yeah, you know, I back in the '80s, I was I worked for a company. I wasn't the company myself, but I worked for them, and they would they would get uh, they would they would promise a certain return on investment, and they would set something up and get an agreement secured by mortgage, and then often those titles would be then sold at some rate who nobody ever to a, this company. From now on, you will be making your payment to X Y Z, a mortgage company. So let's say that happens a couple of times because you can resell the mortgage. Who I, are they? Are they? Where's the title being held all this time when they well, sell? Well, and that point, see, and, and that's listen. You know, if it, it's kind of like um, I, you know, buy something from Steve. So we'll just use an example to say buy something from five thousand dollars, Steve, and then Steve says, "No, my my collection, uh, my collection dude is ten. You pay ten. And, and what he's doing, in essence, in that moment of time, is that he would be laundering that money. Oh, really? Because what he's doing is I pay Tim the $5,000 or $500 a month, let's say, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and that money from Tim to Steve is now free and clear, and he doesn't have to pay taxes because it just came. It was a gift. Like he could, I mean, Steve could claim it as a gift. And, you, and this is how they do this kind of thing. But it's it's way more complicated than that. They, you know, we have, you know, the the title that was, I mean, the the loan that was bought, and it was say it's BOA, just use example, and then it's bought and sold and bought and sold. And it's like, wait a second, I didn't sign a contract with the next company. Oh, which is illegal. They can't they can't do that, but they do it. I I I have a question that, sure. that just occurs to me about. Because uh, I've seen this out and about over the years, having been an investment in real estate back in the 80s. So a private party, there are private parties that love to lend their own money. They sure. have multi-billions and they just go, they make private deals. They say, I'll give you a loan on your house. Uh, it's a, it's just my business or maybe it's his own under his name or it's under his personal name. And you owe me, I have a first trustee back in, the, we called it a trustee back in California. And they're probably just mortgages. They're all the same thing by different. And and you'll owe me for the rest of these 30 years. You're going to be paying it to me. What happens with Nassara? It, it, listen, it, it, if if he ran it under, I mean, here's here's the reality. If you looked at it, one of the things that we know about this is that they've done it by compound interest. Okay. So you've been paying it through compound interest. Because you didn't, a contract is only legal when it's by two separate mentally unimpaired vendors or, or yeah, you know, yeah. people. That's the only way a contract is done. So I didn't have a contract in our first example. I don't have a contract with Tim to pay. Yeah. Tim. I just had a contract with Steve to pay. So if you say that I suddenly have to pay him, it is in essence an illegal level of contract. And so when they do this and see, by the way, I'm not putting the mortgage people or the brokers and, and even some of the regular bankers under the bus here. They have been living in the system and it's it's done by the Fed. Yeah, I mean, they, millions of good people are, are, are employed in this industry. They didn't do it wrong per se. It's not their no, they, personal They had fault. to do it. Yeah. By the way, they had to do their standards because if they don't do it by Fed standards, they're out of business. Wow. And yeah. so when you go, wait a second, who's who's the victim? The in the initial victim is the the person that is on the loan. So Scott's on the loan. You know, I mean, it, it's uh, it has to go because the the courts couldn't track the number of people that would come out. They would go back to the original loan. Who was that sold by? Was it done under compound interest? And therefore, Scott gets the house. Let me look in here and see if this might have had a part two. But it might have been something. I'm trying to remember if this one had it. No. Okay. Um, all right. I better go. We, we better zip through here. Let's see. Um, some tell you that, okay, here. What happens to the national debt? Okay, that's a long answer or a super short one. But Super, a short super one. easy. Um, because, and most people, uh, th there are some people that, that kind of make up a, a statement. Well, 
you know, the, the White Hats paid back $20 trillion to the national debt. Like, guys, do you understand what the national debt is? All it is is um, inflation level points and created by the Fed. Um, do you think the Fed is legal here? Do you think they've done it legally? They've done it correctly? They've done it by contract law? No. Did I say you could send money out to um, to Ukraine? And the answer is no. But not only did I not say that you could send money to Ukraine, you did it under a debt point. And so every, like right now, we are at yeah. $1.8 trillion in underfunding for their budget, which okay. means that, where does that money go from? Where is it? Where is it listed? It's listed on the federal debt points of the 35 trillion. Yeah. And so you go, wait a second. Uh, and and here's, here's the fascinating part. If I go to bankruptcy, um, what I'm doing is discharging the debt. What we are doing in a very unique way is we're bankruptcying the corporation of America and going, I'm flicking you to the side. You don't get any money for this. I'm not paying you back. You just swallow it, buddy. It's over. And, and, and in reality, I mean, that's, that's a, a, a clever way to say it. But in reality, nobody's going to send you a bill anymore because they can't. That you're not going to have to say, well, wait a minute. I want to claim my right to not pay you back. It's, it's automatic. Yeah. You don't, it's automatic. To, you don't have to claim it or know more about it or say, I better go take and a class. Trump did it. it. Yeah. But let me tell you, Trump did it in the executive order 13818. He did said, he really? if you have crimes against humanity, uh, every banker, you know, I mean, uh, uh, the, the big bankers here, right? If you have crimes against oh, wow. humanity, all we have to do is list them out. You don't get your money. In, in essence, that's what the- oh, I didn't realize that was yeah. covered under that executive order. Wow. Yeah. So, so we're not paying back the, any of those people. You're not paying back. And, and, but, but here's what, listen to who in the educational systems and through media, what do they tell you? So are they, and they also say, pay your bills. You're a good citizen when you pay your bills. Has the federal government ever paid their bills? Have yeah, not, their not, not, not during my lifetime, but you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, so realize, you know, it's a double message here, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see. We wouldn't, we wouldn't do this one. Uh, how, how will Bitcoin fit into Nasara? And will it even be part of Nasara? Will people be compensated for Bitcoin or will it be discard, just be discarded? So that's the question. Um, I mean, you don't want to like, I, I don't think we're going to have people like lose every dime and they, they had in Bitcoin issues. Okay. Um, but because the ones, let's just say, let's say Steve had Bitcoin. We're using Steve as my, my perfect example. Did Steve do anything wrong by owning Bitcoin? The answer is no. no. Okay. No. So what you do is the ones that were part of the Bitcoin and had crimes against humanity, they lose it all. And so in essence, you know, you're, you're not going to, you know, penalize Steve because he didn't do anything wrong in that, in that point of investment. Okay. Because he would look at that. Most people have Bitcoin or anything else I didn't do anything wrong so we're talking about you know all we have to do is isolate out the people that we know did something wrong which is all of what we're all talking about is all these people that yeah. did something wrong so they don't get any part of this what part does crypto have crypto is the payment systems that connects bank to bank okay that's all they are so i don't believe bitcoin's going to be it's not going to be backed by gold uh, XRP is not going to be backed by gold. That would be illegal from a constitutional level. That only Congress is allowed. Okay, to so have here's gold a follow-up question. You said uh, cryptos cannot be currency. This cannot. would this must be, okay, but I don't. I don't think you mean crypt, cryptos can't cannot be used to buy things because I bought significantly. <laughs> Back when I had, let me, let me get this one up, about five years ago and I was worried, I had some, quite a bit of Bitcoin and I thought, this I just don't know if I trust this. Well, it turns out this, this very well-known, well-thought-of silver company was happy to take my Bitcoin sure. and I bought my first real gold and silver 
using Bitcoin and it felt almost illegal because I thought, man, this isn't money. <laughs> this is crypto. But they were happy to do it. I think they still would do it. So, sure so when you say it's not currency, you're not saying you can't pay with it. Now, let me let me explain this. So here's yeah. the fundamental nature of the currencies. By the way, crypto is a currency right now. Okay. It's a transfer mechanism because I can use XRP to buy if someone decides they want to have XRP or whatever the one thing and they want it because what what is a currency? It's a it's a weight of monetary value between two different equal I mean two different parties and they both have to recognize it. So what happens is today those are currencies, right? They, are, so they can they are legally today. call themselves that, right? Okay. Now, but they're alternative crypto. I mean, they're alternative currencies. Okay? okay. Now, when we have, when we change over to the Fed, I'm excuse me, the Treasury deriving this thing under the U.S. note, they would have to be underneath. I mean, any type of crypto point would have to be underneath the nature of the Treasury to be legal. But the answer is, why would I want to have um, XRP as my currency that is not backed by gold, but the but legal tender, treasury legal tender is backed by gold? I'd be like, I, I don't need that. But it doesn't mean that the the for instance XRP has to be worth nothing. It doesn't. But, mean uh, uh, let me just push on that a little bit because I mean I'm not sure either of us know, but you sound like you're pretty confident in that. But if someone said. Um, Cryptocurrency uh, isn't backed by gold now, but if the owners or the people who who have the who started it come along and they say we are going to now, uh, this is just potential. We are sure. going to back this with gold. Here's our gold. This is our gold in the vault, and it's all going to be somehow they figure out how to actually legally bind their gold that they own to this cryptocurrency why no, would that that would be legal right would, that, that, would, that be... would in that circumstance if if scott has you know a million ounces of gold and he wants to create a currency in essence right okay. as yeah. long as people bought into scott xrp you know stupid thing right and okay. i have the gold to back it that is a legal okay. way of, of transferring you know between that but but people when they say XRP is gold backed, what they're intimating is they're utilizing a government's level of what they have of gold. Oh, yeah, no, you, so no, you can't do that. It has to be literally. You got to be able to literally show. Here's my gold. This is backing. I mean, I don't know how you do that, but yeah, you have to pony up to the bar, and the answer yeah. is you can't pony up the bar to create a currency in that way. Uh, currently many people, here's a question. Currently many people have their money in several institutions fearing one or more may go under in the future. Will we need only one account? They're talking about that. We've been to told there's going to be a quantum financial account. And a lot of people have different banks just to, to hedge their, you know, their, what's the term you diversify everything. Right. But there, we've been told that you'll maybe there's, you only need one quantum account. So talk about the quantum so account that's coming up. And uh, it's it's kind of a, a misnomer when you say quantum account. What okay. quantum the quantum uh, ability to do is it's like I'm utilizing the server of this computer to run my business. Okay, we're moving from the old server of my old computer and getting my new computer to run all of my business, and that's what the Swift system of the Fed does. We're moving from the Fed's to the quantum capabilities of that, okay? Now, there still have to be vehicles or connectors between different things. So you have to make a connector from that computer and put it, plug it into the wall, like we go into yeah. the internet, right? Your ethernet cable. What that does is it connects your phone company or your internet company to your computer. Well, what is that cord? I believe that kind of cord or that connector would be things like XRP, okay? Those are the connectors between them that connect your the system of it. Now, inside of that computer, you have a billion files going on, right? And yeah. the billion files are are put into folders. If you're if you're as, as you know totally you know stuck in in the ways I do it, 
um, OCD way I do it. I have my folder under folder under folder. Ooh, under folder wow. I can go find the thing, right? Um, and so like every bill is listed out under, you know, with, with a date and name and under 2024 or whatever that is. So I can find stuff. That's what I do just to figure it out. Well, why would you throw all of your cash into one big account? And then now you're having to figure out, wait a second, I thought I pay my business debts or my business information from this account and my, my personal information. And what about my ministry? And what about this one? And what about Timmy's, you know, uh, his college fund? And what about Timmy's, uh, you know, his, his, his lawn mowing fund? Well, that's why you have different bank accounts, right? It's, yeah. Again, it's not deleting the bank accounts. The quantum system is just a lens with which we look into our abilities to see all the different bank accounts. So you don't have to throw away your bank accounts. You, that's that's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, this one just pops into my head uh, that I want to ask this because we, we are a nonprofit. It works for us. It works for our people that donate to the ministry, and they, they happily donate in, and we dig the wells, and they get a tax deduction. But if the IRS, as we know, is going away, People that donate in the future are going to have to donate only if they want to, correct? Not because they get a tax deduction. Is that correct? Correct. Think think about this. It, if you delete the IRS, it is going yeah. to mess with accountants because what accountants do is that they put their you know the, the all the all the sales, and then you put your expenses, your cost of goods, and all your expenses, and you have this little thing called EBITDA, right? And Basically, those are the write-offs, and then you come up with a loss or a profit. That profit is called the capital gains taxes, then gets loaded up to you know who is the primary owners, owner owners, and then they have pay capital gains taxes upon those kind of things. That's how that works, right? So what happens is that we we have these things called nonprofit organizations. Don't don't get too sideways on which ones they are. Yeah. But nonprofit organizations that normally have to be like when they come out to the end of the year, they need to be a zero number, right? They need to have paid out because they're supposed to be, you know, helping you know the world out. That's the yeah. whole point for that, right? Yeah. So they don't have a flow through capital gains area. Whereas a profit business separates into S corporation and LLC and C corporations and all these other things, right? And all those vehicles are those areas. I believe, this is Scott's belief, I believe that when we have this thing on the back end of it, we're probably going to see um, profit and nonprofit businesses, okay? What's the benefit for a nonprofit business? Well, the sales tax, that the national sales tax, they will be exempt from a national. Okay, so they will be exempt. Uh, they'll be exempt from the national sales tax in that organization. In that not organization, outside. yeah, not, right. not their so, other stuff. Yeah. And by the way, many nonprofit organizations don't have to pay sales tax on a state, city, you know, county yeah. level kind yeah. of thing too. So that actually is a, a significant benefit, but they actually have to give back to the community to, to be able to accomplish that nature, right? Yeah. But profit businesses, I, so I, I believe I believe those those designators are going to be just irrelevant. Yeah, it's going to be a, a mess because I, because what what you may find is someone may say, "Look, I'm not offering." Now, because of this new system, any great benef tax benefit by people for donating, in, in fact, no tax benefit. So why don't I just change the way I operate? People will give what they give. I'll tell people how we do it because you want to tell people this is our ministry. But You better it, be more transparent. Let's yeah, you better be very transparent because you could make a huge profit and not reinvest it. Um, yeah, that's going to be a whole, real the whole weird. system. Yeah, the whole yeah. system about gold back. And this is why you guys got to read "Good as Gold" by this. Okay. Yeah. When you get into a gold back currency, that the value is inside of the currency, like it's valuable. I can tie it to a, they'll maybe you'd say a troy ounce of gold yeah. or whatever you want to say. If you tie it to an exact value. What's going to happen on the other end, the buyer is going to walk in and go, you better give me value right now for me to spend my gold on you. 
It is going to fundamentally change the way that businesses need to approach them. It's not going to be any more that, you know, buy one, get one free, you know, crazy bundles that you don't even know what you're. What, what, why you're would getting. that, why would that change? Why would you not have because, buy one, get one free? I, because, yeah. because what buy one, get one free is, is kind of bait and switch. I mean, in essence, what you're doing is you're trying to get people in and there might be a couple of those like, sure. this, but, but, but reality is you're trying to bait and switch people in, come in and buy that one thing, but you can buy everything else in the, in the, in the organization. Okay. Well, that's fine. You're just trying to, you're using it as a loss leader to bring them in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but here's the thing, it's going to be more difficult for organizations to kind of say, you know, um, have a bundled thing, like you're buying title insurance or pick the, pick the in different yeah. kind of vehicle that they're utilizing for whatever that is or a service plan. We see this in the car industry, right? You got a service plan, you go, what did I get for that? And they and they list all these things and you're going, I don't know what those things mean. Or and I mean, yeah, yeah. Do I need well, that? It's going to be uh yeah, it's going to cause everybody and I mean everybody from business owners to employee to rethink their How transactions. What do I what do I call value? What am I willing to Yeah, it's it's more right in your face it's because because it because the reality that happens and this what most churches don't understand this either is that transactions happen the reason why we do handshakes and we do all these different writing things is to have a transparent nature between the yeah. you know the person giving the value and the person giving up the value i can imagine someone saying uh who today taking inflation in mind saying well mr smith uh, if you want to get this boat, you probably should get it today because next week I hear the prices is going up because inflation is doing that. We're going to have to raise it. So if you want to get it today, that goes kind of away. Yeah, it no, kills it. it yeah. And here's the thing. It, it creates more competition. And I mean, this yeah. is such a gorgeous statement, so I'll, I'll do it really quick. I don't mean to be too rude. Yeah, in this. go for it. But, but here's the thing. When we find the executive or 13818, yeah. Guess who has been doing a lot of the gross things? The big corporations. Yeah. Once you find out Walmart or pick the one that you go to. I just work here as a great I just worked here and I thought you know, it was a wonderful company, right? And so guess what? They're going to have employees leaving left and right. They're going to have chaos inside of it because you have lopped off the top of those people because they're already in Gitmo or wherever, yeah. wherever circumstance. You have um, them just topsy turvy kind of thing. What that does is, you know, there's a, a real cute statement of saying, and and so what happens is that you'll start seeing, and this is where we're going to have to have, you know, some real significant help from the white hats kind of thing, maybe military and maybe other kinds of sources of going, okay, let's fill in the gaps here, okay, yeah. and and so. What would happen out there is these small businesses and these small places will kind of go, I'm going to, I can sell that, that head of lettuce or whatever that is. Yeah. And so what happens is it creates more competition in yeah. small businesses who are supposed to be the And answer. I hope, uh, maybe my thinking is wrong. I don't know how society will change, but the, the Amazons of the world are wonderful, but they're probably got all kinds of bad junk going on with uh, at deep levels. But if I think if mom and pop shops can be opening up in large numbers in small cities, people have real money. You pay what, what it's really worth, the same price at both places, you know, because Walmart will lose their edge and what they, I don't know. It just seems like you're, you're, you're a thousand percent right. Here's the, yeah. here's the thing we have been, we've been stuck with these big corporations, right? And they've been doing the gross things. And if you actually know anything about this, by the way, let me tell you a, a, a real fascinating point about book sales. Okay. I sell my own book. Do you know that I sell it for 10 bucks on Amazon? Yeah. Do you want to know how much I make off the book? It's not not very much. Two dollars and fifty cents. That is not including your shipping cost. You got pay, you got to pay shipping or whatever you're going to do. It doesn't come to me. I make two dollars and fifty cents at best. Yeah. So what happens is that wait a second. I'm the creator. I have to do it exactly the right way. Yeah. And yet 
I'm the one that created the thing, but they're making three quarters yeah. of the profit point. My question back to when you when you start seeing this is you're going to start seeing, wait a second, all the superfilious silliness goes away. And wait a second, prices will start of all kinds of things will come into a line and then more people are in the market to be able to accomplish. Yeah, and I know you, you hear Derek Johnson talk about it, the whole music industry is just yeah. the, the big dogs get all the money and the artist who created it all gets this little thing, and then they have to do what the what the big companies want them to do about their music. It's a it's a whole sellout thing. Well, yeah. let me just see. I think that's it. Um, uh, I know a lot of people say this. So I want to throw this in here at drscottyoung.com. You can go on the site, and the very top of it, there's this uh, there's a it's called um, Nasara articles. I mean, you can go in there and download those things, grab like Lots a different subject thing. So, yeah, let me go ahead and ask, get this person. Uh, this is a short answer uh, sure. for today. He, he said, if, I, if I just retired as a teacher, what will Nasara look like for retirees? How will ed, And how will education look in the future for public schools? I mean, just give us a couple quick thoughts. Yeah. So we could talk so a long time about security. That. So let's just say that, that that retiree, she's getting Social Security. So her Social Security is going to go up dramatically. We're okay. going to see that. Number two, she's not going to see um, she's not going to see sales tax on drugs and um, essential items. She's not going to see sales, a national sales tax specifically on new items. So you can buy a used house, but you, if you buy a new house, you're going to pay the premium on it. Um, she's going to start noticing that all of her insurances go down dramatically. She's going to notice that other prices are going down dramatically. Then she's going to notice that all of her debts are gone. Wow. She's also gonna, then going to say, wait a second, my IRS doesn't take any money out of me wow. anymore. Like, do you realize the freedom that it allows? See, people are asking me all the time, well, I'm supposed to get millions of dollars from the government or the the you know the white hats. They're gonna give me all this money, and I'm going for stuff that has no mac macroeconomic sense. But here's what you do: you free the people from the systems of what they only pay a sales tax on the things that they buy. So the more the the higher uh the higher value do that makes Three hundred thousand dollars a year is going to pay more in sales tax yeah. than the person that's making thirty thousand dollars a year, and yet everyone, all boats rise in the rising. Yeah, they're not this thing about now. It's time for the rich to pay their fair share. They've actually, by and large, been paying it through all of the things that they build. Uh, and it's it's always we could talk the, a lot. The rich there. never pay their share. By the way, most people don't realize the rich have never paid their fair share. Why? Because they create corporation after corporation after corporation. Yeah. And and one of the things you learn is you make you know some of this thing. What you do is you put losses over here, so you have gains over here, and they offset one another. Yeah. And this is how they do this. And then then you know the Clinton Foundation, all these other ones have offshore accounts that they don't even have to pay sales tax because they're a sovereign offshore um, company. Yeah. They don't have to pay income tax. No one that that works for them gets to pay income tax. I mean, what they are is what we will be down the hey, road. And by the way, one last thought about, you know, we talk about uh, the new rainbow currency is loosely called that, but it's the U.S. note, however that's termed. Uh, when it's time for you to turn in your greenbacks and people have had safes full of it and houses full of it and trucks full of it that they've been robbing with. When it comes time, all of a sudden, now what do I do? Because we have 30 days, let's say, or 60 days to turn in our greenback. And if you show up with more than uh, a legal amount of cash, they're going to want to know, where did you get this? Yeah, where'd you get it? I mean, so, yeah. so in essence, like, Let's say, let, and we're using Steve. Let's just say Steve is, you know, Mr. Hermit. He's got a big old nasty beard and he, he's been saving like $150,000 and he walks into the bank with his money and goes, I don't trust you idiots. You know, and he's he's got, I, I've seen crusty people like that, right? We all have. Yeah, yeah. And, and the answer is once they talk to him a little bit, you can smell him out. Like yeah. that guy, Steve, he's just. That's yeah, just his, and that's just his money that he. But what I'm talking money. about is what I'm talking about is multi-million dollar drug pushers. Those and, guys, yeah, those guys have to explain how they have pallets of cash in perfect denominations and perfect setups. And you go, wait a second, but the the, the little crazy guy with one hundred fifty thousand dollars, they're all wadded up. The guy with pallets of cash everywhere. is going to have to either 
uh, he's going to have to prove it. He's going to either have to walk away from it and say, I'm leaving my palace because I don't want to go to prison, or he's going to have to prove it, like you said. And, right. and you, and most it. people are not going to be able to prove pallets of cash, but that's the kind of size that some of them have. Well, all right. We better get going here. Uh, Scott, thank you so much. Um, boy, this is interesting. It gets, you know, we're not, we're not running out of subjects to talk about with this, are we? No, we got, um, I have things on, on election. I have issues that we can go on a whole bunch of different areas that I've been pulling videos and different things. So we can definitely do a bunch. Yeah, more. we'll we'll get you. We'll keep coming, having you on. All right, folks, that's it. Let's see. Uh, Andrew Whalen will be with us in the morning at 11 o'clock Pacific. Don't miss that. Uh, Dr. Scott, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Did we put your web? Have we been putting his website? I'm sorry. Yep, guys. You have. Okay, I wasn't paying attention. I was just doing this. So yeah, Dr. Scott Young.com. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye.